Hi, good afternoon. My name is Donatella Casiglia and I am a consultant in diabetes. I have been doing this job for the past uh, 25 years. The reason why I'm so interested in diabetes is because it's a very frequent disease. You need to consider that about 450 million of uh, people have diabetes nowadays worldwide and unfortunately a similar number of patients have diabetes and they don't know to have diabetes. Unfortunately, diabetes is a chronic condition and it tends to deteriorate. It's associated with complication and early mortality. So it's very important to be uh, aware about diabetes and uh, if uh, patients with diabetes have an increased blood glucose or blood sugar, as you want to call it, increased blood glucose damage different organs and create other disease. So this is the reason why it's very important to address diabetes as early as possible and as much as possible to avoid to become diabetic. Type 2 diabetes is a disease where insulin, which is the main hormone that regulates the blood glucose, doesn't work very well. So we call this insulin resistance. And you can see that many patients develop a base insulin resistance year before they become again diabetic. And it's very important to identify this factor early enough. Insulin resistance is found most of the time in patients with obesity. And we know that obesity is a very important risk factor for diabetes. So addressing weight management and obesity is a way to prevent diabetes. So we were saying that insulin, which is the main hormone that regulates blood glucose, it doesn't work well. You need to image that is a kind of a mechanism where there is a key that need to open a hole to allow the good sugar to go from the bloodstream into the cells. But when the key doesn't open the hole where, it's like you need a lot of key to make the job done. And this is what's happened in patients with diabetes. They develop, uh, they need more insulin to make the job happening. Insulin is also regulating other function of the metabolism and they are not making weight loss an easy task. So it's very important to uh, address this aspect. When the diabetes starts, so when the blood glucose starts to be above the normal range, it start to create uh, damage in almost all the parts of our body. Can affect a small vessel and therefore can affect uh, the eye, creating something we call diabetic retinopathy, can affect the kidneys, called diabetic nephropathy, and the small nerves, called diabetic neuropathy. And so on, when the damage become advanced, this become another disease. So, the majority of patients with type 2 diabetes do not develop any symptoms until the blood glucose goes very high. And they may have diabetes for some time and not be aware that they have it. But when the blood glucose starts to be quite high, they start to feel thirsty, urinate frequently, especially during the night. They may lose weight they may start to develop a frequent infection. And uh, most of the time, through these symptoms, they consult a doctor and a doctor find out that their blood glucose is very high. At that time, of course, they will need to be treated with the lifestyle change, diet, and most likely with anti-diabetic medication. So a patient with diabetes has an increased risk also to have a myocardial infarction a peripheral vascular disease where there is an increased uh, frequency of having uh, foot ulcers and therefore leg amputation. This is a complex condition and a complex condition requires a multidisciplinary approach. It's n the, the treatment of uh, type 2 diabetes include uh, three, we can consider three different ways. One is the control of the blood glucose. The second is the screening for complication. As uh, mentioned, many patients have uh, 
increased blood glucose and they are not aware about having increased blood glucose is the same with complication. To detect early stage of a diabetic complication, it is important to find out. They don't give any sign unless it's too late. Just to give you an example, patients with diabetes may develop uh, kidney disease or kidney failure. That in the number of the patients who are on dialysis, I just wanted to give you an example. Patients uh, with uh, type 2 diabetes can have a high damage by elevated blood glucose, but uh, they may not know for many years. And unfortunately, when they start to, to know this blooded vision, a reduced visual acuity, the damage can be really advanced. It is very important to try to find any damage in an early stage because at that point, something can be done. Treatment, medication, being aware increases the uh, possibility to improve blood glucose control and reduce the risk of progression of complication. So while it's very important to keep the blood glucose control in order to reduce the risk of a long-term complication, it's also extremely important to have a regular check that uh, allowed to find early stage of complication. And very important that we advise patients with type 2 diabetes to have a, a regular yearly retinal screening. This test uh, does a, a very simple test that usually is done by the optician, ophthalmologist, or diabetic doctor as well, that uh, look at uh, the, on the back of the eye to see if there is any small, uh, small damage, vessel damage. And when he found out, it can be um, treated properly. Another very simple test is a urine test to check uh, if the kidney is uh, passing the early uh, proteins, uh, so this can be uh, improved and reduce the risk of develop uh, end stage kidney failure. So all of these things uh, need to be done regularly because uh, when it found an early stage can be treated. Many patients with diabetes are not aware about the importance of the screening of complication. You know, every time I see a new patient with diabetes, I am uh, spending a lot of time because I think that is uh, my duty to inform the patient about uh, uh, what is this disease and to share responsibility. And the reason is because a patient can be treated by me, can be treated by somebody else. And this, for me, is very important that the patient is aware that it is uh, important to do at least once a year test to rule out uh, early complication of diabetes. So, uh, unfortunately, when complications are present and are advanced, it is important to involve other specialists. Patients who develop a chronic kidney disease, they will need a nephrologist. Patients who develop a heart disease will need a cardiologist and we need to continuously check, take medication and follow up. So our first duty is to avoid to those in those paths, is to keep the blood glucose control and avoid complication. And as a doctor, my duty is to inform patients with diabetes that this is a possibility and we can do everything is possible to try to avoid developing complication of diabetes. So the treatment of a type 2 diabetes is complex. We cannot rely just on medication. We need to improve lifestyle and we need to improve diet. There are a number of medications available and this is, uh, has been developed uh, in the past 10 years and that really have changed the way in which uh, a doctor manage diabetes. Nowadays, we try to focus on what the patient need so we try to personalize the treatment according if a patient has already developed complication or a patient has prevalent obesity or the blood glucose is the main problem. And this is of course a require a good skill and, and, and a specialistic um, advice. However, 
I think that uh, no one patient should go on medication without uh, having uh, had a good conversation with our dietitian and specialist nurse. And uh, I would like to introduce Rim, which is our dietitian, and I would like to ask her um, some opinion about uh, how to uh, um, approach patients with type 2 diabetes. Usually I tend to give advice about uh, having a healthy diet, about education, but uh, Rim, what do you think about? Yeah, so usually for diabetics we give them like a few changes to do. Like first, of course, we do a consultation with them to know, like for example, if they're overweight, we want them to lose weight, so we want to guide them on how to lose weight. And uh, we also give them like some few tips, for example, if they're not drinking enough water, dehydrated, if, you're, if they're eating a lot of uh, carbs that are uh, refined, like white rice or white bread, we want them to switch to more complex carbohydrates. We also like tell them to increase their fiber intake. Uh, that would be a good idea as well. Usually cut down uh, things that are very salty, very sugary, very fatty, because we don't want them also to have more complications from diabetes as well. But so yeah, usually it's so it must, it's not so difficult actually to 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 follow a diet for what you are well, saying. I think it's easier. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I I think you are just saying that uh, is a is a healthy healthy diet. Yes. It's, it's not healthy. Uh, yes, it's exactly. not uh, some you know extreme diet okay. that uh, we advise to do. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because I have a uh, many patients that come and visit me, and they are always doing try to do extreme diet going from uh, a very low fat, very low protein, very mm -hmm. no carbs diet or whatever. But at the end, uh, uh, what you are saying is not need to, to go for this extreme mm -hmm. diet, but just to be sensitive and moderate exactly. in uh, food yeah. intake and uh, quality. Some few bad yeah. habits. Yeah. And it can be gradual, it doesn't have to be straight sure. away, like change sure. everything from yeah. Uh, like from night to day, but it can be gradual. Yes. Yeah. Introduce fruits and vegetables uh, mm -hmm. this week, then you can introduce complex carbs. So it's gradual until you reach your healthy lifestyle. Yes. You know, what, one of the things that many patients uh, do not uh, realize is that this is a, a forever change. So they are more keen to think about some extreme, uh, quick uh, solution that uh, exactly. a long term uh, change in lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And this is what is very difficult to maybe to achieve, but it is the winning, um, you know, change that can bring uh, to maintain what uh, uh, what has been achieved. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And some people like lose weight, okay, fast, but then you have vitamin and mineral deficiencies. So we don't want to other also to go to the other route. We want you to stay healthy. Something to adopt for your life as a whole. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi, Emma. Uh, you are a nurse with special interest in diabetes, isn't it? Yes, I'm one of those very old nurses. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I've, I've been a nurse now for nearly 20 years on and off. Uh, and one of my passions and interests, if you like, is community-based nursing in particular. Um, so, obviously, supporting people after they visit you when, yeah. they're, when they're getting home. Yeah, and I think this is the most difficult part. Because they, I, I, you know, for, for us maybe it's easy to tell a patient what uh, they have to do in yes. two seconds, but when patients go home, they feel lost. Yeah. They need much more guide, precise guide, and I think your role is very, very important because you are the one who actually follow them, tell them what to do and guide them to achieve the, the, the goal. Yeah. And um, so how you will do this in actually? I think it's quite complex. Um, in the sense that often when patients are coming to doctors the initial diagnosis can be a bit of a shock even for patients that know that their lifestyles are not great and maybe they knew they were borderline diabetic you know I find a lot of patients use that word borderline as I'm okay yes um, you know so I think that that shock in the beginning it, it takes some time to get over that and they can go one way or another they go into total denial where they will not listen to anybody really for whatever length of time it takes to, to digest. 
or they will go all for it trying to correct everything all in two days yeah. which we know with diabetes it's a lifestyle it's a you know something that happens over time changing multiple factors in in your uh, lifestyle like your weight you know your blood pressure uh, you know eating learning how to maybe use equipment when you're checking your blood sugars uh, you know, learning what is a normal blood sugar. For you and me, we know what's yes, normal. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, I hear sometimes patients saying things like, you know, I'll ask them, how's your blood uh, How's your blood sugar today? Oh, it's really good, nurse. It's it's 350. <laughs> yeah. You know, <laughs> whereas for us, we know, yeah. whoa, you yeah. know, but for them, maybe their blood sugars have been running much, much higher, higher. than that. Yes. So I think there's a lot of things. Education is a big one, you know, supporting them after the diagnosis uh, with education uh, and in a language that they understand. Uh, and again, with due respect, I think doctors often use a lot of long words and they respect doctors so they'll sit and listen, but actually they don't absorb everything in one go. Yes. So I think it's, again, reiterating what the doctor has said to them but maybe in a, in a language that they'll understand better. And motivation as well. I find that they'll, uh, patients generally will be very excited about the lifestyle changes in the beginning, but then that tapers off when they don't see results very yeah, quickly. They get frustrated. Very frustrated. Yeah. And as we know, diabetes is invisible. Yeah. So, you know, they're not actually seeing... Uh, I, I, I agree with you. It's very difficult to explain them what does it mean this future, the, the complication is a principle that's very, very difficult mm. to really understand. I will not be able to do my job without you guys. Mm. I think you, you really do the most difficult and important work on this kind of patient uh, that uh, help them to achieve results. Mm. And I really am a big fan of uh, working together. Mm. Yeah, as you say, it's multidisciplinary, yeah. isn't it? You know, and we all have to work together. Everybody plays their role in a different in a different way. Um, you know, and I've obviously being British, I've been surrounded by the British system where it is very uh, multidisciplinary, where there's a lot of nurse specialists um, that are supporting the consultants and the doctors in you know in that role in the community or even within the clinics when they're coming in to see the doctor. Um, you know, in other countries, we're not quite there yet. You yeah. know, we have excellent doctors that are giving, uh, you know, their advice and medications, but it stops then. And I think that's where one of my passion, you know, that's one of my passions, but it's also a passion of, of the health bank and THV healthcare as well. It's not, it stops after the doctor. It's how we continue to improve the lives of people when they're at home. Thank you, Emma, for what you say, and um, really appreciate it because you really explain very well what is your role. And I really think this is the global vision of Health Bank, how to support their patients. Thank you very much.